the joy of the Lord is our strength. We are strengthened with might by his spirit in our inner man. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Father, we're grateful. We're grateful for singing. We're grateful for worship. We're grateful for prayer, praise and prayer and thanks for for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your love, the love of God that has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We're grateful for that, Lord. Thank you for the saints that are here and those that are watching with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless you all. Say Amen. hello to somebody. Amen. Please be friendly and smile. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thanks, guys. Well, do you want to tell our teammates what we're going to do at the end of the service? Yeah, so tonight we had it on our heart just to have a little bit of ministry time at the end. So we'll do our message and we'll have the salvation prayer like we always do and time of offering. But then Daryl will continue playing um, and we will just say goodnight to those watching online, but we'll invite people forward that would like prayer. And that's an important function in the church, and we want to make sure that we are um, offering prayer for healing, deliverance, different things, uh, whatever's going on in your life, we want to do what Jesus did. You know, I don't know if we, have we mentioned lately that we ought to be coming against some things in this world and things in our lives Absolutely. and things that we know are uh, contrary for us and you know we want to be uh, strong to you know coming come against means putting up a stop sign just saying that's enough yeah. I've had enough of you yeah. enemy and we're just gonna uh, come against you in the name of Jesus and the name that's above every name stops him in his tracks and so we release our faith in the, the word of God the name of Jesus and he's gonna stop his movements against Amen. us. Amen. Amen. And so that leads us into our subject for tonight, fight the good fight. And uh, then also on our title is Juneteenth today. So uh, Father, we just thank you for the word of God tonight. We thank you for this day when uh, the celebration of the freedom of the slaves that were held against their will, Lord, we just pray for any and every person that has been affected by uh, those things in this, this, this day, Father. We just pray for any person that's been hurt or devastated or uh, just bound up in their hearts because of what had happened. And we just pray for peace and restoration and help from heaven to get forward in the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so... Um, Moving from that idea to fight the good fight, fighting for the freedom of every human from the clutches of the enemy. We want every human, every brother and sister, every family member, we want everyone to be free. And Jesus came to set the captives free. This is something we talk about all the time, but are you free? Are we free? Are we truly free? And we know that faith says we are free, but we examine our heart, we examine our mind, we examine our life. Are we free? And you can jump in anytime you want, Pastor. Well, Nance, I think um, we don't want to be fake. And there are a lot of Christians that understand that whom the Son is set free is free indeed. And so, but is that a, a reality in your life? Are, or are you bound by something that you are keeping hidden? Or maybe the devil's lied to you and said, well, you can't tell anybody about that because what are people going to think? Well, what Christians are going to think is that the enemy's the enemy, and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy and bind people up. And a lot of times he ensnares and entraps, including Christians, just because you come into Christianity 
That stuff doesn't just break off of you. Spiritually speaking, yes. Everything is made available to you in Christ. But we know lots of Christians that are still living in different types of bondages or with strongholds or different things. They need healing in their life. And we are okay with that in the sense that there's no shame. When you bring something hidden into the light, it loses a lot of power right there because it's no longer hidden. A big lie of the devil is keep it hidden. Don't you say anything. What are people going to think? Well, I thought that for a long time. And then I got to the point where I didn't care because I wanted to be free. My desire to be free so that I could be more effective in ministry was greater than my pride, thankfully. Because <laughs> really when it comes right down to it, it's just pride that holds people back. But we need to be free and we need to be the healthiest version that we can be so that we can be more effective and readily available to be used to help others. And the cool thing about it is when you get free from something in your life and you know you're free, you have, an, you have a tremendous gift to say to someone. It's the word of your testimony can help someone that God brings across your path that is bound with the same thing. And you can say, you know what? I know because I've been there. But let me tell you about the one who set me free. And it's an open door to minister freedom and help and deliverance to someone else. And that's the best way to punch the enemy right, right in the face for what he has lied to people and stolen from people is to be able to turn around and sock it to him and then keep going and minister to more and more and more and more and more as God allows. And so people are, are enslaved in different kinds of bondages. And what I love about, you know, the celebration of Juneteenth is they were free, but they didn't know it. And how many Christians, we are free in Christ, but we don't really know it. We're not walking in that experience and so you can relate that, you know, you can relate to what that must have felt like in the sense that, hey, it wasn't right. They got their freedom. It's not right what the enemy is doing in the body of Christ. Let's get people free and explain it in a way that does not bring shame or guilt or any further anything. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I've had about 10 thoughts as you were talking, but the one that's standing out to me is uh, something so simple as the prayer of agreement. Yeah. If two of us will agree, if two or three of us are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst. But if two of us will agree on earth is touching anything we ask, touching anything we ask, we, we want to continue to always offer the prayer of agreement. And so that's why people come up and others, sometimes people come up after service, sometimes you have a, a prayer line or you just go up to somebody and say, hey, we agree with me in prayer. And I want everybody in this church to have the freedom to, to find somebody you know who prays and just get together and, and be in agreement and pray the prayer of agreement. Again, if two of us will agree on earth as touching anything we ask, two or more of us agree on earth as touching anything we ask, it will be done of our Father who is in heaven. We pray together in the name of Jesus believing we receive it when we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you can continue on, and I'll just make Hebrews comments. Hebrews 1034 from the New King James. For you had compassion on me and my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. So while imprisoned in Rome, Paul was awaiting a hearing before Nero, who was a Caesar at the time. And Paul, as a Roman citizen, had appealed his case to the emperor, and he was waiting to be heard. So Paul had been falsely accused, as we know. So he's sitting in prison, and he's chained to the Roman guards, 
as part of his punishment um, for preaching the gospel. But that's where he wrote Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and Philemon. And if you look at Philippians, Ephesians, and Colossians, they are full of the joy of the Lord, Man, rejoicing, how to live yeah. out your Christianity, have the weapons of your warfare in the sense that's in Corinthians, but put on the whole armor of God, stand when you've done all, and continue to stand. Now think about that. If you were falsely imprisoned right now, what would you be doing? Would you be continuing to preach the gospel and not let what your present circumstances deter you, or would you be having a fit and a pity party? I'm just asking. You answer that question yourself, right? I'd probably, I'd probably have a pity party first, grab myself by the ear in short order, straighten myself out and go, all right, devil. If you, if you think, well, my dad. <laughs> Teresa said, like your grandmother, my dad used to grab our ears when we were in trouble in public. That's what we got was an ear pinch. So I see myself. I do that to myself sometimes. Okay, straighten it out. God's still on the throne. Just because your present circumstances are not comfortable in this moment does not mean that God can't use you. It's your attitude that makes the difference. And Paul pressed forward. And that's what he said for all of us. Press forward. Keep your eye on the prize. Don't quit. Do not quit. Say, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. Sometimes I think, what makes the difference? People that don't quit. People that just decide, I'm digging in my heels and I don't care and I'm not quitting. And eventually you will win. Always. You know, it's interesting that I'd look at it and as I listen, how much we depend on Paul's writing. And it's just, I mean, we These lean like 75% of our, yeah, of the they are, New absolutely. Testament. And so, uh, Lord, we're not uh, slacking off on you, but uh, you said that Paul was uh, the voice that was going to be heard for the New Testament, and so we, uh, we yield to that. And all right, so Philippians 1, 13 and 14, so that it get, becomes evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ and most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. That's New King James. Let's look at the New Living Translation. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I'm in chains because of Christ. So it was a testimony. The Apostle Paul, uh, you know... How he, how he handled it. How can anybody handle being in jail, confinement, in the, we don't know the ju dungeons. He, he knew the dungeons, the dungeons, whatever. Other you know? people to see that witness and to go, you know what? I can stand strong too, because the persecu the persecution in that day against Christians was extreme. We think the persecution that a lot of Christians are experiencing now is something that we have not seen before, but trust me, under under Nero. It was extreme, and it caused his testimony and his attitude caused other Christians to be that much more bold and to dig in their heels. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters here and watching that we would boldly speak God's message without fear. Father, we just thank you that we pray that the entrance of your word would bring light to all of us, that we could share with our families, our co-workers, anyone we come in contact with. Give us courage, give us strength, and the will to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go ahead, my dear. Ephesians doing... 6, 8, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. So go ahead. Hey, that went off in me today. And I made a full page wow. of notes on the idea of Ephesians 6, 8. Uh, any good thing that a person does. You know, I just want to amplify the idea because uh, whatever good thing, Christians, sometimes when we make mistakes, sometimes when we fail, sometimes we do things contrary. We kind of quit doing good things because we're so down on ourselves. But I had this epiphany or this encouraging uh, just... The presence, I'm getting the chills right now. Uh, the presence of God came on me about reminding us as a church, do not stop 
doing the good things because it says whatever good things a Christian does shall he receive of the Lord whether he be bond or free. Even if you're bound, bond there is a slave, but even if you're bound, let's say bound instead of bond. You know, everybody has something that they need to get free from. Maybe your past, maybe memories, maybe you name it. I'm not going to go into other things, but we, uh, whatever we have, and sometimes those things make us feel bad about ourselves to where we don't want to do good things because we're worried that God is mad at us or he's not receiving us or we shouldn't attempt to come to him when we got something going on. But this just went off in me and I want someone to get this idea. Ephesians 6, 8. Uh, whatever good things a Christian does shall receive of the Lord, whether he's bond or free. We testify that yeah. whom the Son has set free is free indeed. But sometimes there are things that, that are binding us up and holding us back, and yet keep doing the good things that you're doing, yeah. because God says that you shall receive of the Lord, even if you're bond or if you're free. Someone say amen to that in Jesus' amen. name. Amen. All right. All right, 2 Timothy 4, 2. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all patience and doctrine. It says long-suffering, but really it's patience. Have patience and doctrine. To repro reprove, rebuke, exhort is sometimes necessary to wake Christians up from darkness. Hey, let's go back there. Let's say 2 Timothy 4, 2 says preach the word. Let's say share the word. Because when it's preached, you go, well, I can't preach because I'm not called or I have whatever. No, but if we just simply put the word in to share the word, yeah. everyone can share the word. Mm -hmm. Share the word, be instant in season, out of season, repro rebuke and re reprove. You know what? I had some tough Christians in my life that called me out. And it was sometimes embarrassing to get called out. There were guys that, you know, you, know, you, you respected and, and you knew they knew the word and they, they'd call you out sometimes. And, and it's okay. It's okay if a brother or a sister who is looking for your best interest to call you out because you can't grow out of things if right. you just don't want to deal with it yourself. But if somebody else who loves you comes and points it out to you, man, it, sometimes it's embarrassing, but you get called out and you, and you deal with it. And you realize, I need to grow past that point. But that's so, healthy Christianity. That's healthy Christianity. If it's, if it's with your best interest in mind, it's not meant to hurt you. It's meant to help you let go of snares and weights and things that are just holding you back. Then receive it, right? You can judge anything in your own heart if it witnesses with you. You know, nobody likes to have their toes stepped on, but... Truthfully, we all need our toes stepped on. A little so bit of shaking here and right, there. So that we don't go down the wrong road. In my mind, I'd rather have my toes stepped on than run around with broccoli in my teeth and nobody told me the truth. Right? You don't want to run around where everybody can see something and you think you've got it all hidden and covered up. And people are smart. People see things. I'd rather have my toes step down so that I can stay on the narrow road and finish my course and run my race than to just get off course because somebody didn't want to hurt my feelings. First of all, if I have broccoli in my teeth, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you tell me I have broccoli in my teeth. And that's just ridiculous. we got to stop being so sensitive and let God love us so that we can be better versions of ourselves. You know what our most common correction is? And I bet you it's the same for everybody. Pride. And when someone identifies pride, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. Admitting that pride gets in the way. And thank God for other people that can see it on you. And there are times... Uh, People said I was in pride, and man, I was trying to be so humble. And I, it, it hurt because I went, man, I didn't think I was in pride, but I received correction anyway. I was willing to examine myself if somebody pointed something else out. And so I just said, Lord, man, help me, because I, I don't see it in my own life. But so. Well, and I think, you know, there's a, if you're going to point something out, if you're going to point out a 
speck in your brother's eye, you better make sure the plank is missing in your own, too. So there's, there's the balance to that. You know, be careful that you're not judging another person. Um, look after your own heart, too. But we're part of the body of Christ and the family, the company of believers that God has called together. Because there's a supply in you, and there's a supply in you, and a supply in you. And when we all bring our supply together, where one is weak, another is strong. And so we can, we can use that to help us grow up into Christ. It says to reprove, rebuke, and exhort is sometimes necessary to wake Christians up from darkness. Sometimes you get called out, and it's good for us. And... Uh, we're not in the habit of going out and pick, pointing out people's flaws or criticizing other Christians and no, things but like we that. Have been but called people on to that tell we people to knock it off. Yeah, we times. people we trust. So, we listen to them. If right. you know, if somebody sees that you're in pride and they they share that with you, or or they just want to help you, praise God for good-hearted Christians that can iron sharpening iron to help Amen. us be better Christians. Amen. First Timothy six twelve. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. So fight the good fight. Well, it means there is a fight. <laughs> Doesn't say sit back and relax and enjoy your, your life of faith. No, fight the good fight of faith. So you got to engage. You got to stay in there. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. So fight the good fight of faith is staying the course during the tough time, not quitting. But can I, can I uh, just elaborate yeah. on that idea of, I believe in confession, I know you do too, is confession isn't just always admitting your sin. We're saying professions of faith, confessions of faith, the Bible says that. And so building that scripture into your heart and your life is through saying it out loud and writing it down and keeping it in your pocket, finding a scripture. Hey, man, nobody expects you to know the whole New Testament, doesn't expect you to know the whole Bible, but you should know some scriptures. Do you have a scripture that is uh, your go-to scripture that helps you in all situations? That's where you got to start, uh, an overarching scripture that you can depend on for power out of that scripture to help me and propel me to go forward, you know, to be strengthened with, for instance, I, I always say strengthened with might by his spirit in my inner man. That's one of my favorites because uh, I need that strength to go forward. Everyone needs strength to go forward. And as you have a scripture, a go-to scripture, pretty soon you know, hey man, that scripture might not be the go-to scripture right now. What other scripture can I have? And we begin to build scriptures into our life. And pretty soon, when we're diligent, we have four, five, 10 scriptures that we can go to in any situation that covers any need and we can be strong in the Lord and the power. Of, there's one right there. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And having done all to stand, we could go on and on. We could go on and on, but having scriptures to bring power of God into your life. You can get power without, we're going to pray tonight for people for the power of God to come on them to be free and set free, but People as believers that are mature, most of you have been Christians long enough to where we should be at a place where we've got a repertoire of weapons from the scripture for our life. Amen. Well, and there does come a point where you just have to lay hands on yourself. Lay hands on yourself and you shall recover. Kind of like when your mom stops dressing you and you put your own clothes on and then she stops feeding you. You're going to have to cook your own food or you're going to starve or eat burnt food or whatever you're going to do. But, you know, at some point, we grow up in Christ and we learn how to stand and we do these things. And then you turn around and you help others. And that's the whole process of making disciples. You're a disciple of Christ. You are being discipled, but then you should also be discipling others that God brings across your path. So Paul did not let his present circumstances deter him from what he knew God called him to do. He used his wrongful imprisonment for the gospel and made the most of the circumstance. And again, I just had a note in here. Considering the books he wrote while in prison, they are full of joy, keeping the faith, and putting on the full armor. Full of joy in prison, time. wow. Keeping the faith. So if you read Ephesians, Colossians, and Philippians, Philemon, Philemon, if you read those with the understanding that 
He wrote those while imprisoned wrongfully. Can maybe give you a, a fresh perspective on how powerful those words that he wrote really are. Because I believe that the words that he wrote, that sustained him during, those, during that tough time. And there's a lot of similarities in those books as well. You know, also, I mean, think about it. If he's sitting there, what do you, what do, you do when you're sitting there with nothing to do? You think and you remember. And the scripture, forgetting those things which are behind, pressing towards the mark for the price, forgetting what I did to people when I was a, a crazy man, a Jewish law abiding priest, and I went after all these people that were contrary to the Jewish faith but wanted to believe in Jesus Christ. I tortured them, I persecuted them, I even killed some of them. Well, and even my determined purpose is to know him. To know him, my determined purpose, his determined purpose was to know Christ. That's cool. Forgetting. Yeah. Don't forget to forget. All right, so we can also look at things in our own lives that represent chains or bondage. Whom the Son is set free is free indeed. So speaking to the chains, building our faith by declaring our freedom and using the weapons of our warfare. We, we can't pass up Those speaking. Those are steps to our own freedom. We can't pass up speaking to our chains. Right. So that is, you know, again, speaking the desired end result. We've been saying that from day one. We speak the desired end result, and I want chains in my life to be broken, so I need to speak to those chains. Chains. We're not, we're not speaking to anyone else. We are declaring our faith that those chains to my past, those chains to my memories, those chains to my habits, and, and, and whatever. whatever it is, that they can be broken. Chains do break, and we sp but a Christian must get to the place where you're speaking faith to the things that you need. You're speaking positive things to the things that are good for you that you want, but you're also speaking your faith to the things you don't want in your life so that those chains will be broken, those chains will be severed. We're going to lay hands on people tonight. And some, someone needs the power of God that in agreement where we can lay hands on you and break that chain. We believe in the power to break the chains from the past of memories, of habits, of weakness, of sickness, of disease. Anything can be broken by the power that's in the name of Jesus, the word of God, and the agreement, the blood, the agreement of the saints. Praise God, we're going to do this. So think about this. The word, it's like a hammer that what? Smashes, shatters the rock of stubborn the resistance. Rock of stubborn resistance. So you think about something that's got you bound. Every time you declare a scripture, you're chiseling away, you're chiseling away, you're chiseling away. Have you ever tried to break a rock in two? And you just hit it, and you hit it, and you hit it. I don't know, sometimes kids have way more patience to do stuff like that, and they don't have anything else to do. At least I didn't when I was a kid, so hit, 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 and all of a sudden, one hit, and the thing breaks apart. Well, that's what happens. Sometimes people go, well, I'm saying it. I said it 10 times and nothing happened. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. But sometimes it takes some constant chiseling, and all of a sudden there's that one hit, and it just breaks apart, and you're free. So you have to kind of think about that sometimes, especially dependent on how long has that habit been in your life? How long has that lie or that stronghold had a grip on you? Hammer, 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 hammer. Your, the word works. The word works. The word works. It's hitting that thing, but it's also building your faith to receive the promise. It's hitting it. You're building your faith to hit to receive the promise. So it's a, it's a two-edged sword, and you just have to stay with it. Everybody that stays with it gets their promise. That's great that blessing. you quoted my scripture. Jeremiah yeah, twenty nine. Well, my one of my favorites. It's Bible. <laughs> yeah, it is. I know, but it's good that you brought it, it up. You, it's not right, my true. word a fire. Is it not a hammer that right. breaks the rock of stubborn, stubborn resistance. resistance? Stubborn resistance. You were saying it perfectly. You yeah. you just you know, hammer that rock until it breaks. Ha you know the fire. If the hammer ain't working, then let, let the, the fire, fire burn it burn out. It but out. praise God Absolutely. for the word. Amen. All right. So God's word become, uh, Psalm 107, 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Everything you need for healing and deliverance is in the word of God. 
He deliverance. Sent it Praise God for deliverance. He already sent it. It's in there. Praise God it's in for there. deliverance. Amen. Find the sword for you, for you. God's word becomes a sword in our mouth when we speak it. Do you want to? Is there anything else you want to? We've got a few minutes. I love to. Uh, you know what? Because of the effect and the power that God deposited in his word. I love to know scripture. I just, that's my thing, is to be able to speak a scripture to circumstances. And um, realistically, I don't, you know, I don't go to you for prayer or go to you for prayer when I can speak a scripture to the situation. Now, if that thing, you know, it's a hammer that shatters the rock of stubborn resistance. If it's stubborn resistance, then yeah, I want agreement in prayer. But by hammering that thing with the word of God, and that's why confession is so important, is we continue to speak God's word. So I challenge someone right now, you got to know some word. Please have a pocket full, a heart full. And I say a pocket full because you could write down a couple of scriptures. You know, you start out knowing three, and then five, then ten. Pretty soon, you get good at it, and you learn a lot of verses from the Bible. And then when something comes up, you have it, and you're ready to speak it out because God deposited his power in his word. Amen. I don't even know where we're at. Oh, let's just jump down here because we just have a few minutes. Romans 10, 8, but what does it say from the English Standard Version? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. How do you get the word of God in your heart? You put it in your mouth. There's a mouth-heart connection. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Ephesians 5, uh, 6, 13, Take up the whole armor of God, which you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So God's armor is given to us to protect us in our daily battle against sin and to keep us standing. And then 2 Timothy 4, 7, this should all be our goal. What's the end game? Here, I want to know what the end game is. I have fought the good fight. This is what Paul said. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That's our end game, that we keep the faith and that we honor God until he either comes to get us all together or we check out and cross over. But we want to be known as people that have kept the faith. We have stood our ground. We have not given in. And we have stayed true to our God. One last point here. We can't skip this. Someone needs a revelation of Hebrews 4.12. The word is living and powerful, sharper than an 80 to sword. It's the strongest weapon that we need to have. And I encourage somebody to take that word, know that Hebrew 4.12 verse, so that you know that you have the power at your disposal to pierce, to divide, to break down, to discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's such a good verse. One of my favorites of all time. Okay. I, love all, I love all the world. Word, amen, amen, amen. Uh, so uh, as we prepare now to, uh, to pray and uh, to lay hands on people that, that want to come forward and need prayer for things, um, we'll, we'll, we'll dismiss after the, uh, the prayer and also the offering, and then we'll, we'll lay hands on people that want it. So uh, we just want to encourage everyone to, uh, to know the salvation prayer so that you can share it with somebody else. Amen. But we say it every time, so we should have it memorized by heart. Let's say, Dear God in heaven, Dear God in heaven I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me. I believe that he died on the cross for me. And was raised again from the dead. And was raised again from the dead. So I could have eternal life. So that I could have eternal life. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. And be my Lord. Be my Lord. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I receive forgiveness now. I receive forgiveness now. I receive eternal life. I receive eternal life. I thank and praise you for it. I thank and praise you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, just an encouragement to everyone that churches receive offerings. It's not unusual. Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, 8, and 9 talked about the, the collections for the support of the, of the saints, the poor saints, but also the Bible talks about offerings, tithes, and gifts. If you're not a tither, bring your offerings. If you're not a tither or a giver, then be generous to help 
support the work we're doing. Father, we pray for the tithes, the gifts, the offerings that come into our church. We promise to use them for your work and your service. Thank you for the saints that support this church. That I ask you to bless them abundantly, supernaturally. Meet their needs according to your riches and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, John will be in the back. And then also, if you're giving online, that just needs to be done on our website, 3degreeschurch.com. So we'll go ahead and sign off now. Sunday, we do have um, our Ministry of Helps Leadership meeting after church. Uh, so anyone interested is invited to stay, and we'll have lunch provided. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and say good night to those watching online, and then we'll um, invite people forward that would like to have...